meet Chef Jonas. He loves food. And when I mean love, I mean obsessed. I mean passion to the very core. I mean, look at how awesome I am at cooking. Dance like no one's watching. Obsessed. For Jonas, being a chef is more than just cooking. It is pure l'amour, personified. He puts in experience, mind and heart in every dish he creates, followed by hearty servings of chest bumping. But at the end of the day, Jonas is all about creating food that makes people happy. And of course, about being a big hit with the ladies. Now I'm going to show you some tricks of the trade so you can cook like a pro at home. I'll show you how to turn everyday ingredients into gourmet dishes and how you can get out of sticky culinary dilemmas in a flash, all without having to break the bank. So load up on the prep, self-confidence and awesomeness and get ready to be the chef of your own kitchen. All this and more on Chef Next Door with Jonas Nunn. I'm in my new place with a brand new kitchen. I'm super excited. But even if I'm a mature, manly man, I still succumb to peer pressure, especially when it comes to my friends from Burgers and Brewskis, Francis and May Wan. They want to come over, they want to check out the new place. I told them that I'm nowhere near ready to entertain, and yet they're still coming. <sighs> but I'm a pro, I'm not gonna panic. This is definitely something that chefs would call a culinary challenge. And I'm up for it. What to do, what to do. Mm. I got it. For dessert, I'll make something that's never failed me before. Bread pudding. And... Mm -hmm. My signature tuna dip would be perfect. What else can I add? Something hearty. Corned beef spring rolls. And just to add a little more class, a simple cheese platter. Got it. Done and done. All right, I don't have a lot of time. My guests are on the way, but I have to make it really good because their standards are really high. So let's go. Canned tuna, one of the most useful products in the kitchen pantry. Now, whether or not you know it, Philippine tuna is some of the best in the world. In fact, 70% of Philippine tuna is exported to Japan because they love Philippine tuna so much. In this case, tuna and water. Mustard, lots of different kinds. The two most popular being yellow and Dijon. The only difference is there's a lot of white wine in the Dijon. But in this case, because it's just a dip, I'm using yellow mustard. so many eggs to choose from. There's free range, there's cage free, there's omega, there's vitamin E, there's brown, there's white. The most important thing is, check the date, freshness. Muscovado sugar. It's raw, it's not washed, and I love the flavor. The first thing you learn as a cook is to be ready with your mise en place, meaning having everything in its right place. Having your ingredients ready, having your equipment ready, having all the resources that you're going to need ready within reach. And that, as a cook, is what's gonna get you prepared to solve a lot of culinary situations and challenges. What I have here is readily available in most markets, groceries, and stores. And the reason I came up with this is because I literally have no more time to figure out a fancy dessert. So this is one of my go-to desserts. This is sure to please a crowd. Bread's good. I'm gonna make my custard for the bread pudding. I'm gonna need eggs. And this is just a simple custard. Custard is usually made of eggs and milk or cream, sugar, mostly vanilla. And because it's me, 
and it's Francis and May one. So I just want to whisk it. I want to dissolve the sugar in the custard. And I gotta do it aggressively because I'm in a hurry. All right. All I want to do is soak my bread. I want all that bread to soak up this beautiful custard with a minimum amount of liquor. Now, who am I kidding? I put a lot of liquor in this. The trick is to just let it soak it up. Topping. Butter, raisins, gonna be beautiful topping. And the butter is gonna work with the sugar to create a nice caramelly crust. I'm gonna top my bread pudding with this, and it's gonna be a beautiful, beautiful, messy, gorgeous dessert. And I'm good. My pudding's rested and soaked beautifully all those custard flavors. Bread's super soggy. It's absorbed all that wonderful custardiness. Now I just have to level it, make sure it cooks evenly. And here I'm using a non-stick sheet pan. So let me dollop this with my nice little topping crust. And what's gonna happen with this is it's going to melt as it bakes, form a nice buttery, sugary, caramelized layer, bursting with flavor. And that's gonna work with the butter, with the bread, with the cream, with the sugar, with the vanilla, and of course that brandy that we put. And I'm ready to go. While my pudding is baking, I'm gonna make a beautiful creme anglaise. It's also a custard sauce, but I'm gonna cook it this time separately. I'm gonna start with some eggs, sugar, vanilla, milk. Let me whisk that first. Make that nice and smooth. Dissolve the sugar in the eggs. Now, that's good. I'm gonna move over to my double boiler or bain-marie. Doing it this way will allow my custard to cook very gently because I don't want scrambled eggs on my sauce. So I want it to be a gentle heat. Although steam is hotter than boiling water, it's not directly in contact with it. Unlike if I just put it directly in a pan or a pot. And what I'm looking for is a nappé finish. That means it's sticking to the back of your spoon. And the visual cue for that is you run it and you drag your finger through the spoon. If the gap remains almost steady permanent, you've got your nappé. Pudding's done. It's beautiful. Wow, look at that. Sexy. Now, of course, I get to taste it first. I have one thing to say. No fail dessert, and I'm awesome. Nothing beats the scent and intensity of real vanilla extracted from the pot. Most people don't know, but vanilla is actually part of the orchid family. Now, making your own vanilla essence by combining real vanilla with vodka. Why vodka? Because vodka is relatively flavorless. So let's not let that vanilla go to waste. Whatever's left of it, put it in sugar. And that makes for some amazing vanilla sugar. Ooh, that bread pudding was good, if I say so myself. And from the sweet, I do the savory. That's up next, only here on Chef Next Door. So here's what I've done so far. I've finished baking the bread pudding and making a sweet custard sauce. While those two are cooling in the fridge, let me do my no-fail tuna dip. All right, let me show you how I do my famous tuna dip. It's a party, party favorite. Let me start by boiling some eggs. And I like my eggs for this dish. I like it between medium to hard boiled, but there's a gentle way I do it. Take my eggs, place some room temperature water. Could be cold water. 
and then I bring it to a boil. Now, this was taught to me by a Cantonese chef, his name is Penny. Heavy, heavy, heavy accent, but I love that guy. No, but the way he taught me was, when you bring your eggs to a boil slowly, it heats the eggs gently, and it doesn't crack the eggs with a rough boil. Once this comes to a boil, I'm gonna take it off the heat, and wait about, I would say, seven, eight minutes for it to be a nice medium to hard boil. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna start the other component for my tuna dip. It's a mayo. Now, since I wasn't able to get me some mayo, forgot about it, I'm gonna teach you how to make your own mayonnaise, and it's not that hard, and this way you can control how it tastes. Let me start with my eggs. I'll just have to separate the egg yolks. The egg yolks have a lot of lecithin, and that helps the liaison. It will help emulsify those two liquids that don't normally mix. Vinegar and oil. It's like water and oil. And the mustard would also do the same. The lecithin inside these, the egg and the mustard will help the liaison. I'm gonna season it now. Some salt, some pepper. And in this case, I, I'm using olive oil because I love that flavor. And all I have to do is whisk it and then while I'm whisking, I'm gonna make a drop-by-drop drop pour of my oil. And as soon as it starts thickening, as soon as it starts liaising, I'm gonna increase the stream. Yay! Yay! Yo, what's up? It's nice to see you guys. Yo, thanks for bringing the wine. Look at that. Look at that. Thank you for coming. Guys, these are my friends, Francis and May Wan. They're the guys behind Burgers and Brewskis, my favorite burger joint. Now, I need one of you guys to whisk. Okay. Okay. Who's the stronger one here? <clears throat> By the way, the best dressed chef I know. Now, you drizzle the oil slowly while he whisks vigorously, <laughs> drop by drop to start with. I'm so glad Francis and May Wan took over whisking. Those two have the muscle power. I really need to get back to the gym. Oh, and one thing that May Wan said that is so true about making homemade mayo? If there's a zombie apocalypse, you can make your own mayonnaise. That's sexy right there. Oh, sexy. Now you guys need to taste it. <laughs> Let me have some sexy. Right here. Mm, I like that. <laughs> Right, right. This is. It's like a party yeah, in your mouth, right? Exactly. I want some bread now. <laughs> All right, we got our mayonnaise done. Mm -hmm. do next? Our eggs are almost done, and now we're gonna assemble our salad. Assembly is so easy. Take some drained tuna, add in the shallots, garlic, lemon juice, cilantro leaves with those beautiful stems, and homemade mayo. Add in the boiled eggs and mash all those beautiful flavors together. Because it's me, of course I add hot sauce. You like hot sauce, right? I always want to add that extra level to it. Season with salt and pepper. And then the best part, tasting. Good, it's a little creamy. Uh, nice little bit of hit from the cilantro and the hot sauce. Mm -hmm. It's good. That is pretty good. I want the crackers now. That is sexiness right there. Next dish, corned beef spring rolls. One of my favorite, favorite cocktail foods. Okay. This is what you guys are gonna do next. Us. Us, again, us. We came here as guests. Are you gonna make us drink at least? Right, because I'm an awesome host. I'm gonna get you guys a drink. Now, this dish is corned beef, which I'm gonna start heating up now. And the reason I start with the corned beef first is, is because it's one of those things that has a lot of oil in it already, and I don't wanna use way too much oil. I'm gonna let the oil render. After rendering the corned beef, add in shallots, garlic, hot sauce for that extra kick, and look at that, sexy. Why don't you guys hand me over that bottle of wine that you brought? It's mine. <laughs> it's ours no, now. We're I'm a good guest. Give it. Give. Come on. Come on. I'm gonna... Share. Yeah, it's really hard to come between a chef and his alcohol. I know. <laughs> 
but um, I'm gonna show you a neat little trick with this bottle of wine. Cool. Up next, find out what a wine bottle has to do with spring rolls and how you can do spring rolls without a wrapper. Curious? Stay tuned only here on Chef Next Door. Bread pudding and custard sauce are chilling in the fridge. Tuna dip's done, and the filling for my spring rolls are ready to go. On to the next step. This is where the bottle of wine comes in. I learned this when I was looking for my rolling pin and I had to flatten something, and all I had was this, a bottle of wine. I just took it from the cellar and just started using it. It's the same purpose, right? It's heavy, it's flat, you can flatten it. Was it empty or full? It was full when I started. <laughs> we knew it. Neat trick, huh? I've learned from my experience in the kitchen that bread is an awesome alternative to the usual thin spring roll wrapper. Not only is it more readily available, it holds in the filling a lot better. Let's get our spring rolls assembled right here. Okay. My corned beef filling is cool. Just put a little bit and make sure there's a margin so that it will still be able to form. Now I learned this technique from my mom. We used to make a lot of spring rolls whenever there was a party. And I have to make sure that I fold it so that none of the filling spills out when it's in the fryer. You want to try one? Yeah, sure. The egg wash is here to make it stick. It's like a paste. And let's speed this up. After rolling, the spring rolls go either into the fridge or the freezer. This makes them less likely to break apart when you fry them. In the meantime, we make a beautiful mint yogurt dip to go with it. Ooh, sounds good. Right, the perfect accompaniment to our spring rolls is this beautiful yogurt mint dip that I'm gonna show you guys. Just non-flavored yogurt from the chiller, some seasonings, lemon juice, some fresh mint, which I'm gonna chop. Now, the beautiful thing about this is we have a very savory spring roll with a corned beef. That's a very salty, savory type of flavor. And as chefs, you have to build flavors and you have to combine flavors and textures that work well together. For example, the yogurt and the lemon juice with its acidity will counteract and cut through the fattiness of the corned beef and the oil when you deep fry it. And that will create a beautiful balance and harmony in your mouth. Nice! To make the dip, squeeze out some lemon, chop some mint, and add it to the dip Add pepper and olive oil to brighten up the flavor. Taste it. Perfect with our spring rolls, which I think are ready to fry. And deep frying is a lot like steaming because you sear the outside. And if you do it right at the proper temperature, if you do it right, then the inside will steam properly. So if you know you did it right, it's crispy outside, and inside it should be moist. Okay. And the thing with frying is you want to do it carefully. I learned the hard way never to drop anything in hot fat. It, it, it will hurt you very much. So you want to do it one by one, and you just want to gently place it and let it go. Now, be careful. You have to put it one by one, not all at the same time, because every cold thing you put in your hot fat will lower the temperature and you'll end up with a soggy, fried, whatever you're frying. And this is just a beautiful party favorite. Gorgeous right now. He excited. Yeah. <laughs> I'm super okay. excited. I know it's good. <laughs> so, we'll plate this up. Our beautiful, cool yogurt mint dip. Our golden brown corned beef spring rolls. Enjoy the sight of that. After frying those beautiful spring rolls, let me go back to that wine. 
And this time around, it's going to be living up to its life's purpose to be enjoyed by me. I mean, the three of us. We need to drink our wine in the right temperature. Like, white wine is, is meant to be drank cold, like about 10, 12 degrees Celsius. And let me show you a bartender trick I picked up a few years ago in Canada. So, I just need my wine, my room temperature wine. All I need to do is dissolve a lot of salt. Like how much? Like extra salty, like concentrated salt water, seawater salty. I just need to dissolve the salt in the water. And what this does is it increases the specific heat of the water so that when I put my ice in it, it's gonna be super cold. It's gonna take away the heat from the bottle. This is literally how they used to make ice cream before refrigeration was popular. Salt's dissolved. Ice. So I put that in. Swirl it around for a couple of minutes. And in a few minutes, that's gonna be super chill. All right, you guys can chow down on the spring rolls. I still have some in the freezer. <laughs> I'm gonna make the oh, next okay. thing. Because I know you guys are classy. I'm gonna make you some simple cheese platter thingamajig. While Francis and Maywan enjoyed the corned beef spring rolls, it's really good. I sampled the cheese platter. Just some nice soft cheese, crackers, strawberry jam, cashews, and raisins. Beautiful! And there we have it. Classy cheese platter. Look at that. Nice. Thank you guys. Thank Cheers. you for coming. Thank you for having us. So there you go, folks. Limited time, limited resources. As long as you have the will to do it, a little practice, a little planning ahead of time, you're gonna have restaurant quality food at home. Yay, yummy. One more time, guys. One more time. All right.